Hi, this is Beatriz and in this video I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step editing process of my conceptual artwork, Breathing. In order to create this composition, I used six images. I got the window from what it looks like an abandoned place and then I got this very stocky, probably digitally generated room. Then I also used this image that I took of myself sitting on the floor, an image with clouds. And finally, in order to add a bit more mood to the image, I also used these two textures. The first thing I will do is to bring both the image of the window and the room into Photoshop. I will start by resizing the room because I only want the left wall to be visible. So I'll resize it to the point where the right wall is no longer visible. I will go to the crop tool and increase the size of the image. And next, I will take the image with the big window, create a selection with the lasso tool, and then add a mask to it. And then I'll grab the brush tool with a soft brush selected and 100% opacity and flow. And I will delete all the wall that belongs to the image with the window. Like this, it looks correct. I will increase the size of the window because I want the window to be pretty large and I don't really want the ceiling to be visible. So I'm gonna grab the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna sample this part of the image where there's this line so it's easy to copy it. And then I'm just gonna fill the area with the ceiling. And about this looks okay. Now, when I look at this room, I just feel like it looks really fake as if it would have been digitally generated rather than a photograph. So I want to add a little bit of texture here within Photoshop and I'll do so by creating a new layer, filling it with black and then go to filter, noise, add noise. And I'll add about this much with a Gaussian distribution and then I will change the blending mode of this layer to soft light. So with that, I've added grain to this image. And because it's a little bit strong, I will decrease the fill to about 34%. Now I'm gonna grab the polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna create a selection of the floor. I'm gonna go to the layer one, which is where I have the room. I'm gonna duplicate the layer one and then I'm gonna mask that selection of the floor on the duplicate layer. This way, I will be able to edit the floor separately from the walls. And just by looking at this room now, I feel like the floor is super sharp. It doesn't look realistic at all. So I'm gonna blur it a little bit so it looks a bit more natural. And I'll do so by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and I'll add a Gaussian Blur to about 5.6. And as you can see, this already makes the room look a bit more realistic. I'm gonna group all these layers to be a bit more organized and I'm gonna call the group Room because it contains all the elements of the room. And now I'm gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer that will affect the room. And I'm gonna modify a little bit the hue and decrease the saturation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open this group and I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer and clip it to the layer with the floor only because the floor is also looking pretty bright in comparison to the walls. So this looks good and next we need to make this window look realistic in this room. So the first thing I notice here is that we need to adjust the perspective of the window because if you follow the line of the floor and you see the base of the window where the window ledge is, they don't match. So they need to be parallel and at the moment they are not. So I'm gonna correct that by going to edit, transform, And more or less, I'll see that it matches with the lines of the floor. And now it looks a lot better. And I will do the same as before. I'm gonna create a group for the window where I'll add the layer with the window and I'll add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to it. Decrease a little bit the saturation, modify the hue. And because this window has yellow, I'm also gonna edit a little bit the yellows so that the room has more consistent colors. Now I'm gonna bring the image with the subject. I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna go to the quick selection tool 
I'll choose select subject and that's gonna create a rough selection of the subject and then I can mask the extra, the background. And now I can get a better idea on how big I will be compared to the room and the window. So something about this looks right. Now that I zoom in, I see that the hair was pretty nicely selected, but I can see that there's a little bit of issues on the nose and the fingers. So I'm gonna correct those manually. I'm gonna grab the brush tool and a small hard brush with opacity and flow of 100% and paint in white on the parts that I want to reveal, like this area on my nose that I want to bring back. And then I'm gonna mask the areas that I want to hide, painting on the mask with black. So I'm gonna alternate between these two colors on the mask to hide or reveal areas of that mask. And you can quickly switch between both by using the X key on your keyboard. These areas between the fingers are a bit trickier to mask with the brush tool. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool. I'm gonna create a path where I want to create a selection. And then once the path is closed, I'll right click and I'll make this a selection with about a feather radius of one pixel. And then I can paint with black over that selection to mask it out. And I'll repeat the same process in the areas that are a bit tricky in between the fingers. So now this has been properly masked and now I want to add a little bit more volume. So I will add a curves adjustment layer, change the blending mode to multiply, invert it and clip it to the subject so that it only affects the subject. And then with a pretty big brush and uh, opacity and flow of about 45 and 35%, I'm gonna start painting on the areas of the mask where the subject is gonna have a lot of shadow and also emphasizing the shadows created by the folds, as you can see. Now I think that this is a bit too strong, so I'm gonna decrease a little bit the fill, about this much, and I'll add another curves adjustment layer change the blending mode to screen, invert it, and clip it again to the subject below. And now I'm gonna do the opposite effect, add a bit more light to the subject, and you do it following the same process. So I'll grab the brush tool, and I'll paint with white over the areas where I want to add highlights or emphasize highlights such as the face. Make sure to have a soft brush selected so that the transitions are smooth, and also on the folds and especially the frontal part that it's gonna be facing the window. So take into consideration where the light is coming from the window and where the shadows are in the room, which is towards the right, in order to create these lights on the subject. And like this, it looks good for now. Now I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna bring it to the bottom of this group right under the subject and I'm gonna grab the brush tool with black selected. It doesn't need to be pure black, you can have like a dark color because we are gonna create a shadow for this subject. And I'm gonna roughly draw a shadow as I feel it would look like when coming from the window. And now I will move it a little bit adjust it, maybe decrease the fill a, a little bit because it looks too strong. And now I'm gonna create another layer where I'll repeat the same process, but in this case, I'm gonna create a shadow that it's even closer to the subject. Something about this, and again, I'll decrease the fill. And because this image is not really a portrait, I'm not gonna pay a lot of attention to the texture of the skin and to create a lot of edits on the skin, but I will quickly correct some things. And 
Now I'm gonna create another curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna bring the curve up. I'm gonna invert it and clip it to the subject. And with the brush tool and white selected, I'm gonna go over the edges of the subject to create this sort of light that you get from like this intense source of light hitting on the subject. So it goes around the edges of the skin and the clothes, the fingers, etc. So that it looks a bit more realistic. Okay, and now, in my opinion, here comes the fun part of this composition, which is adding the beams of light that come from the window. This is where all the magic happens. So I'm gonna add a exposure adjustment layer. I'll bring the exposure down and also edit a little bit this gamma correction value. And with the help of the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna create more or less what I think would be the shape of the light that would be falling from the window. So about this. And now on the mask, I'm gonna mask out the selection, which means painting it in black. So now the exposure adjustment layer, it's only affecting the areas that are outside this selection and thus looks as if it has light coming in, even though it's actually the light from the original picture, but it now creates this effect. And uh, because this now looks super fake, the edges are super sharp. We want to diffuse those ed edges and blur them out a little bit. So I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I will add quite a lot of blur to this so that it looks diffused and natural. So something like this looks okay, over 100. And I'll go ahead and do exactly the same again. I'm gonna edit the exposure, gamma correction, and also a little bit the offset. I feel that that makes the black look a bit more washed out, a little bit more towards gray. And again, with the help of the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna create another selection, but this time it's only gonna go halfway to the subject. It's not gonna affect the back of the subject, which is supposed to be in shadow. And now with the brush tool, with a pretty big brush, I'm gonna paint over that selection to mask out that selection so that this exposure effect is not visible on that selection and thus it will have then more light. I will add also a Gaussian blur. I want the particles that you can get from light to be visible and for that we need to show a little bit of fog or dust and you can use any sort of image with smoke or clouds to generate this. In this case, I'm using a stock image that I found with clouds. I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen and I will resize it so that it follows the direction of the light that's coming from the window. So this diagonal. And now I'm gonna paint with a pretty soft and big brush. I'm gonna paint on the mask with black on the parts that I want to hide. And I'm gonna decrease the fill so it looks a bit less intense and a bit more diffused. I'm gonna decrease a little bit the flow so that I can make the edges transition a bit better between the light and the dark side. And then I'll increase a little bit the opacity and paint with black over the subject so that this layer, these clouds are not as visible on the subject. And this looks okay. Now I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer and change the blending mode to screen. And again, with the help of the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna add more beams of light, but this time it's gonna be coming from the individual squares in the windows so that it looks even more realistic and takes into account the frame of the window. So I'm gonna repeat this process and maybe when I'm using the brush, play with the values of flow so that some of these beams are a bit more intense than the others so that you can see a little bit of difference between all of the beams that I'm adding. I'm gonna do the same in the bottom and on the top and I think something like this should be more than enough. And when I'm done, I will add a Gaussian blur and I'm gonna delete this part in the back and I'm gonna do so by selecting the brush tool and painting with black on the mask. 
and I'm gonna adjust a little bit also the light on the back part of some of the other layers as well. And now I'm gonna group all these layers and call it lighting. As you can see, with the lighting, we created like a pretty dramatic effect and it made all the difference. I'll add a color balance adjustment layer and adjust some of the values for mid-tones, shadows, and highlights and clip this color balance layer to the subject. And now I'm gonna add a new layer and clip it to the subject. Then I'm gonna select a reddish color and with the brush tool and low opacity and flow, I'll paint with a blending mode of color over that layer to create a bit of blush. And then I'll create another layer with the same color. I'll just change the blending mode to saturation so that the color is a little bit stronger and I'll paint over the lips. Finally, I'll create another curves adjustment layer and clip it again to the subject. And with this, add a little bit of more targeted highlights to areas such as the eyes or the highlights on the lips, etc. And I'll do the same with the shadows. Add a little bit more shadows on the eyebrows and the eyelashes to make the eyes pop out a little bit more on the face. So now I'll bring in the new texture. I love this texture because it adds both a beautiful color and also particles to the beams of light. I'll change the blending mode to soft light. I'll resize it and position it where I feel it fits better. And then I'll grab the brush tool with black selected and I'll paint over the mask with both an opacity and flow of about 35% so that the transition is a bit smooth. And then I'll increase the opacity and hide completely the areas that are farther from the beams of light and also a little bit from the subject. And finally, I'll bring this paper texture layer. It's very simple, but I feel like it adds a really nice, really nice effect. And I'm gonna also change the blending mode to soft light and I'll decrease the fill. And now I'm gonna merge all the visible layers into a new layer. And I'm gonna open that layer in Camera Raw. Then I'll do the final fine tuning, adjusting some of the basic light values. Also something I always do, go to the turn curve panel and add in a bit of red to the shadows and green to the highlights and add in a little bit of sharpening and noise reduction, maybe a little bit of grain as well to match the overall grain of the image and also a little bit of vignetting because I feel that it gives it a little bit more dramatism and I will go to the color mixer and adjust some of the values for HSL. And about this looks pretty good. As my final thing, and I promise this is the last one, I will just add a exposure adjustment layer because I feel like the floor has a lot of light on the center. So I just want to add a um, gradient transition. So I'll decrease the exposure and invert it and I'll create a gradient on the mask. And this is it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Have a nice day and see you next time.